I made a decision at the age of nine to become an actor in the world of film and television. So you can say I'm in it for the long haul. Are you? Hi, I'm Olivia. If you're new, say hi. If you're back for more, you're nuts, my friend, but don't worry, I got you covered. <laughs> so join the family and let's do this crazy life together, okay? I'm specifically located in Toronto, Canada, so I'm just gonna throw that out as a disclaimer before we get started. If this video doesn't scare you off, I've got a few more videos in this playlist to get you started. Film versus theater. Just want to quickly say that these are two separate worlds. There are two separate unions for that. I went to theater school. That's what I graduated in, in university and now I'm working in film and television. Being an on-camera actor means you are playing someone else. When you are a host, that means it's you, your personality, your flavor, you know, kind of like what I'm doing here. But when you're an actor, you are playing someone else. That is your job. You are not yourself. So as awesome as your personality may be, they are hiring you for your acting skills. It's funny because in the beginning I thought acting was like if I'm hardworking and my personality shines then you know I'm already more than halfway through the door. No. This is a job about your imagination and your creativity. I need to mention that this is a lonely job. There, You do require some sort of maturity and confidence to get through day to day. There are no guarantees in this business. If somebody promised you bookings or auditions, run. No one can promise you anything at any point. And even if they do, I mean, I've had producers be like, we're gonna look out for you, Olivia. We have a good feeling, or you got this. And then it doesn't develop. Just know that there are a lot of people involved. So if you do get something, just be grateful because yeah, it's a special moment. But so there are no guarantees, okay? So even when you sign with an agency, does not mean you are ever, ever gonna get into the room. All right, so let's cover payment. Number one, never does an agent take payment before like they actually get you on set and then whatever you make that day, they get like 15% or whatever you guys negotiate. The only thing you are gonna be dishing out a bit of cash on are headshots and some classes because regardless of what level you are in the acting world, you need to keep up that training every couple of months, at least a few times a year, you know? And those classes and headshots do not need to be through the agency. I know some agencies have it in-house, but just think about it. They could potentially get you in for headshots and classes and never call you out, right? So do your research. My general rule of thumb for headshots, classes, agencies, anything is go to a company that has been around a while. And I don't mean a year or two, I mean like five, 10, 15 years, cause you know they're established and shop around, always shop around. Scams, I have been a personal victim of this a number of times. When my parents signed me up, they did the whole headshots, classes, run. Do not let that happen to you. Not to say that the newbies aren't good because I know a lot of people were with established agencies, they break out on their own. It's just a risk and it's a matter if you are willing to take it. This is a journey. You could spend years and years and years of your life without reaping any sort of rewards. Are you mentally and physically prepared for that? Are you okay putting in tons of time without much gratification? I mean, it could happen. It could happen tomorrow, but it could happen in 10 years. So that's kind of what just separates those who really want it to those who are just coming in for a good time. This is a craft that takes time to develop and hone and that's done over time. What's important when you're working is one thing, but what's equally important is what you're doing when you're not working. How are you keeping busy? How are you staying on top of things? The number one thing I can tell you to do is get a YouTube channel. This is a never ending creative process that even when one video is done and you think, okay, great, it's out. I'm on to the next, I'm thinking about next month, the next three months, now I've hired, you know, a few people to help me out here and there. So again, this is, I'm honing my skills, I'm keeping creative, I'm helping you guys out in the process. It's just a win, 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 win. Also, when you're off, you can go to the gym, like it's mental, physical, you've gotta take care of you and yourself. 
Because what's gonna happen if no one calls you for months? I mean, I've been there. I've had one agent that would call me once every two, three months. And I was like, hi. I remember going into the analyze mode where I was just like, okay, I'm gonna text her, I'm gonna call her, I'm gonna email her, let's see what she's setting me up for. Like, it was too much on my end, 100%, but I didn't know how to navigate it. So now I've reached a point in my life where I can keep busy without hassling and hounding my agent and they can actually get me out more. I'm also with a different agent at that point, but we can talk about that at another point in this video. All right, next, let's just get into agents. Let's just talk about it. Having an agent is not the end all be all. Yes, it's part of the process and I think you need one in order to be taken seriously and everyone's just kind of has one. But again, it does not guarantee that you're going to get into the room, which means into the audition room. It does not mean that. You could be out once every few months, you could be out five to 10 times a week. Like there's so many factors that depend on it. So I would say make sure you find somebody that you connect with, that you can communicate with. If you're looking for an agent, just go to the Actra website. They have a list of reputable agents and that should kind of help guide you in the right direction. Auditions, you can be called into audition at any given time. Typically it's 24 hours in advance. I love getting those auditions on Friday, so at least I have the weekend to prepare. So auditioning is stressful. I haven't met one actor that loves it and it's just, you know, no nerves, no nothing. If they do tell you they love it, they're probably lying. It's nerve wracking at any point in the process. But the good news is, is that if you get called into the room, they can already visualize you as the character and they want you to succeed. So all you gotta do is get in that room and handle it with confidence. Make them feel like by hiring you, they don't have to worry. But before I move on, I've got to talk quickly, quickly, quickly <laughs> about self-tapes. If there's ever a chance you can't for some reason, make it to an audition, always ask your agent if you can self-tape, which just means if you can film at home. You obviously have to have some sort of equipment, but if you've got an iPhone, some sort of smartphone, always film horizontally against a plain backdrop. Obviously you can pay somebody and go to a studio. It all depends what equipment you have. And that's an alternative if you are missing an audition in person. I have been booked from a self-tape before, but it's rare, so it's always better to get in there in person. You've got to think about other work. What are you going to do for work that's going to allow your schedule to be so somewhat flexible for auditions? Will your manager, supervisor be mad if you have to say leave early or you can't make it in tomorrow or you need to rearrange things? You need, you need to think about that as a whole because it's going to be a big part of your life. That's probably been one of the hardest parts in my process, just kind of like juggling that. And sometimes it's like sending weird signals to the universe because you're like, oh, please don't call me today because it's gonna be such a hassle with work to rearrange. But really I want them to call me. So just find a job that'll kind of get you by, but make sure you're financially secure because if that's not put together realistically, even if you book one acting gig one day a month, it's still under the living requirements. You also have to think about, do you have a car? How are you going to get to all these places, locations? Are you gonna be relying on public transportation? What's gonna happen if something's running behind? Just make sure, make sure you're aware of what you're getting yourself into. Competition, competition is high. Everybody wants to do it. And regardless of how special you are and how many skills you have, there are gonna be 10 other people that can do the same thing, maybe better, maybe less, but there are always people ready to just take over, I guess. So that's why having a strong mindset is vital. If you want a video on mindset in film and television and how I get by, I can do that for you. Let me know in the comment box below. This acting world is a business. If I could do it all over again, I'm no regrets, but I'd probably do business school because how you market and how you advertise is so valuable. And I feel like I, I ended up taking some business courses now myself on the side, but I think that could have made the difference. It's a process, you live and learn, and you don't wanna just have a resume out, have some photos, like you want to stand out. Also, social media presence nowadays is a thing. If you've got a ton of followers, 
I can definitely aid in you getting some parts. Obviously talent is going to be focused on first, but I know a ton of people who have just gotten acting parts because they are social media famous. And I'm not saying it's fair or right, but if you have any sort of leverage, you've got to use it. Rejection. I mean, do I have to cover this part? All right, I'll make it real brief. It's gonna happen, it's gonna happen a lot. Statistically, I think for every 40, 50 auditions, you're supposed to be able to book one. When I say you're supposed to be able to, it usually happens in that time frame. Sometimes you don't get that in a year. Yeah, those are the hard facts. This business is feast or famine. I've had extremely high highs and extremely low lows. Save your money, put some aside because especially in winter here in Toronto, it's not as busy and you need to be able to take care of yourself, your family, and your well-being. So you're technically self-employed, you're an entrepreneur of sorts, and this is a lifestyle you have to get used to because if you're in it for the long haul, it's not just gonna be one year of this, Age. It doesn't matter at what age you start. If you, obviously it's easier when you're younger, I feel like there's less competition. Well, I guess nowadays everybody just wants to do this. You, When you're younger, you just have more time to build that reputation, more practice, but it can happen at any point. So go for it. Don't let age be a limiting factor at all. All right, let's talk about experience. Everybody wants you to have it, but nobody wants to give it to you, especially when you're starting out, right? This is catch 22. I didn't have any connections when I was starting out in the business, none at all. No one told me where to go, who to apply to. It was all trial and error, scams, you name it. But the one thing I gotta tell you is the more you know, the more confident you will be and you'll be able to navigate this business. So the after website, which I will leave all the links in the description box below, is an excellent resource. Just study, learn, connect. If you know anyone in this business, ask questions. So yes, if I had to tell you what to do in order to get experience is number one, connect with someone who is in this business. Number two, I would suggest getting any sort of experience, even learning another language, a dialect. There are one day workshops. There are plenty of acting studios all around the city. Research, connect, read reviews, see what people have done and see if you like it. Cause not only do you have to enjoy it, but you gotta make sure that stuff is on camera so you can hopefully use later on and show it as a demo reel, which is a collection of your on-camera work to an agent, should you wanna pitch it. I would also advise you to be an extra on a film set. So be a background performer, sign up with an agency. That is the best way to see how a film set operates. Look at the productions that you're gonna be in. You can kind of get an idea of what they're gonna hire you for as an extra is kind of gonna be the jobs. You might be going out as an actor slash performer, and it's paid. This paid experience. And I made a video on how to become an extra in Toronto. Should you guys wanna watch that, I will leave a link in the description box below. Thank you so much for staying till the end and watching. I will see you next week. You subscribe, right?